Speaker, I ask unanimous consent that all members may have five legislative days in which to revise and extend their remarks and include extraneous material on the subject of my special order. Without objection, so ordered. Mr. Speaker, we live in a very dangerous world. It seems like there is chaos and darkness all around us, and as a former Air Force pilot, I've seen the results of the abuse of power in a very real way. It seems like every time we turn on the television or we read the news, we get the feeling that the world is being turned upside down. The wheels have come off the train and we seem to be careening towards the cliff. Russia takes Crimea and then sends ununiformed troops into eastern Ukraine. Tens of thousands of deaths in Syria with millions of refugees. The recent evacuation of our own embassy in Libya. Iran working toward a nuclear weapon, ISIS in Iraq creating essentially a terrorist state, the crisis of Chinese power threatening significant parts of the Eastern world. The list of concerns is very long indeed. But nowhere is the strife and uncertainty more dangerous, more strategic, and more critical to U.S. interest than what we are witnessing in Israel and their military operations in Gaza. Israel is the most important ally in the region that we have. It has the only democratically elected government in a very unstable and violent part of the world. It is, has a vibrant, free, capitalistic society that respects human rights, that respects women's rights, that respects minority rights, even the religious minorities. And let me say this as clearly and as unambiguously as I can, Israel is our friend and our ally. So tonight, we stand with Israel and state without equivocation that Israel has a right to defend itself. Let me set the stage for the crisis that's happening right now. Very quickly, September 2005, Israel withdraws from Gaza Strip, home to some 1.8 million members, Thousands of Israelis are uprooted, and missile fire from Gaza into Israel increases dramatically. A few short months later, in January 2006, Hamas deposes Fatah, wins elections, and becomes the ruling party of Gaza. The United States, Britain, and all European Union consider Hamas a terrorist organization. June 2007, Hamas seizes power in Gaza with Mahmoud Abbas and the Palestinian Authority. Skipping ahead now to May 2004, rocket attacks from Gaza to Israel increase. June 12, 2014, three Israeli te teenagers are kidnapped and killed on the West Bank. The PA aids with Israel Defense Forces in clamping down on Hamas on the West Bank, and tension increases significantly. As a result of that, Hamas unleashes hundreds of rockets into Israel. Finally, on July 7, 2014, the Israel Defense Force launch Operation Protective Edge. Its goal is to stop the insistent rocket attacks in Israel. Within a week, they expand to an offensive ground war. Its purpose is to destroy Hamas tunnels built for military use against Israel. Now, we will talk more about these tunnels, but let me mention just briefly that to date, Israel has uncovered more than 66 access, access shafts to 30 tunnels. Palestinian militants have fired to date more than 2,000 rockets toward Israel since the fighting began on July 8th. Let me put that in perspective before I turn the time over to some of my colleagues. Imagine, if you will, that Al-Qaeda or ISIS in Iraq has pledged the utter destruction of the U.S., something which is not hard to imagine. Now imagine they placed a military frigate off our eastern shore. Now they claim that it's a supply ship. They say that it has no military purpose, that it only has civilian and peaceful purposes. But then imagine they start lobbying not a few and not dozens, but hundreds of rockets and missiles along our eastern shore, specifically targeting cities where millions of innocent families live. What would we do? What should we do? Would you expect your government, your president, to protect you? Of course we would. We would defend ourselves. We would seek for the elimination of the threat. We would protect our own people, our values, our way of life. Any nation would. And every nation should be able to do that. And that is all the State of Israel is asking, the right to defend itself. That is why 
we are here tonight to defend a friend and ally against not only missiles and rockets, but against an onslaught of deception in the world of public opinion. We want our friends in Israel to know that they do not stand alone. I have invited some of my friends and colleagues to share the floor with me this evening as we stand firm and united in defense of Israel and their right to protect themselves. I'd like to begin with my colleague, Mr. I should say Dr. Excuse me, Winstrup from Ohio. He's a fellow veteran. He served in the Army Reserve since 1989 and served a tour in Iraq. He sits on the House Armed Services and the Committee on Veterans Affairs. And I yield three minutes of my time to Dr. Winstrup. Well, thank you. I appreciate uh, my friend, the gentleman from Utah, for putting this together tonight to allow us to share our message in support of Israel. You know, the fear that has engulfed innocent civilians in this conflict is really unthinkable. Uh, in southern Ohio and across America, could you imagine rockets raining down indiscriminately on Cincinnati or Chillicothe or Portsmouth? Ohioans know the fear that they feel when they hear tornado, tornado sirens blare and the impending threat of possible destruction. Imagine that fear amplified and extended continuously over weeks by an enemy that seeks to eliminate your country and your countrymen. The continued success of the Iron Dome has protected countless innocents and weakened the perpetual threat posed by the terrorist organizations that surround them. And I'm proud to say that America has been a strong partner in pioneering this technology. And while Israel continues to protect their people with the Iron Dome, Hamas urges Palestinians to become human shields to protect their Hamas rockets. We all hope for a peaceful resolution to the current conflict. Unfortunately, Hamas continually rejects ceasefire deals. Hamas refuses to recognize Israel's right to exist and is dedicated to destroying the state of Israel. Just yesterday, Hamas used tunnels to burrow into Israel and ambush Israeli soldiers, killing many. Can you imagine a terrorist group with tunnels built to infiltrate your town, your village, your city? The construction materials used to build these terrorist tunnels were intended to construct schools and hospitals. But Hamas would rather continue its perpetual aggression with Israel than better the lives of the Palestinian people. Hamas would rather fire rockets from playgrounds and homes than work towards peace. The American public stands with Israel on a foundation of shared democratic values and a commitment to a free society, especially in the face of rising anti-Semitism across the globe. Israel cannot draw down while Hamas continues to dig tunnels, giving them unfettered access to towns. Every nation has the right and responsibility to defend itself, and Israel is no different. And with that, I yield back to the gentleman from Utah. Thank you, Dr. Winstrup. Next, I'd like to yield three minutes to Mr. Stephen King, a colleague and gentleman from Iowa. Mr. King sits on the Agriculture, Small Business, and Judiciary Committees, and he has always been a strong defender of Israel. Mr. King. I thank the gentleman for, thank the gentleman for yielding and for leading on this special order to have this discussion about the sovereignty and the safety and the protection of Israel, our strongest ally in the Middle East, the place where there is the rule of law, where there are property rights, where they're available to everyone that is an Israeli citizen, whether they happen to be of, uh, whether they happen to be of Arabic descent, whether they happen to be of Jewish descent or any other descent. Um, and the allies that Israel has been deserve on our side that similar kind of support, in fact, a stronger support. And there have been so many messages that have been spent, sent from this administration to the contrary. We need to be standing on the floor of the House of Representatives sending a message to Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, and the leaders that are there, the members of the Israeli Defense Force. We stand with you, Israel. Any nation that's surrounded by enemies, that is infiltrated by tunnels that are dug through to be able to be infiltrate and kill innocent people on the streets of Israel, kidnap them, celebrate that. Any government that is formed uh, for the purposes of eradicating Israel from the face of the earth. And, um, Mr. Speaker, I, I would point out that this new government that was formed among the Palestinian Authority, the Palestinian Unity Government, includes Hamas terrorist leaders in the cabinet. It's finally, the political arm of Hamas, which always was the Palestinian Authority, has openly now embraced Hamas itself. And this Congress 
and that and the administration itself and the American people need to understand that there is a Palestinian anti-terrorism act of 2006 which prohibits the US from sending foreign aid to Palestinian Authority government that includes Hamas terrorists it says that we're not going to fund any terrorist organizations and Hamas has been declared a terrorist organization we're watching now as the operations that were so utterly necessary um, the Israeli Defense Forces going into Gaza uh, losing Israeli soldiers and yes they have to defend themselves thousands of rockets have been fired into Israel and living under that threat of a people that outside your borders would raise their children to carry suicide vests to kill themselves to try to kill Israelis to teach the things that they teach to the young people in that culture and in that climate that hatred is on one side of that border of Gaza. It's not on both sides. It's on the Gaza side. It's in the West Bank, and it's all around Israel. It's not from within Israel out. I'm amazed at how forgiving they are, how patient they are, how tolerant they are, how they have suffered the way they have, and they waited till it absolutely had to be before the order was given to go in and eradicate the tunnels and to try to take out some of the, some of the rocket locations. And these rockets are mounted in schools, around children. They're using human shields of the children. They're hoping, I guess I can't quite say hoping, but willing to accept the casualties of children because that's a media message to the world. This is an appalling set of neighbors that Israel has. They want to live in peace. They have a right to live in peace. We stand with Israel. Israel stands to defend itself. We need to make sure that they have the resources to do so and the moral and the, the support uh, from the United States. I would point out also that the statement was made by uh, Ari Shavad of the newspaper in Israel. He said that Secretary Kerry's latest attempt for a ceasefire over the weekend was, quote, very senior officials in Jerusalem described the proposal that Kerry put on the table as a strategic terrorist attack, close quote. That's not a very strong message, uh, Mr. I would say to Mr. Speaker. It's not a very strong message to come from our Secretary of State representing the policy of the President of the United States. Our policy is we stand with the Israeli people. We stand for their self-defense. I thank the gentleman for setting up the special order tonight, and I yield back to the gentleman. Thank you, Mr. King. You know, he mentioned the tunnels. I'd like to illustrate this, if I could, and just interject very quickly. This is a uh, photograph of the uh, tunnels. These aren't dark two-foot uh, two holes dug into the ground. These are sophisticated, expensive, complicated uh, contraptions that have been put together. Thirty tunnels, not including the more than two dozen that were discovered prior to Operation Protective Edge. They run for miles. They're dug more than 60 feet beneath the ground so that they avoid seismic detection. Some of them are large enough that you can drive a vehicle through them. And you think, what is our purpose? It's to smuggle men. It's to sm smuggle weapons and material. It's to, in some cases, unfortunately, to smuggle and to hide those who have been captured and again kidnapped. Hamas operatives have been intercepted emerging from the tunnels with tranquilizers and handcuffs, obviously to kidnap Israeli soldiers. Once again, what would, uh, how much better would the situation have been for the citizens of Gaza if this if these resources and this money had been diverted instead of building tunnels to building infrastructure and schools and hospitals and other things that the citizens there could use. So thank you, Mr. King, for, for your comments. I'd like now to recognize my good friend, Mr. Danes from Montana. Uh, he's a successful businessman. He sits on Homeland Security, Natural Resources, and Transportation and Infrastructure Subcommittees. I yield three minutes to my friend, Mr. Danes. I want to thank the gentleman from Utah for putting together a special order. And if, uh, I also want to thank you, um, Congressman Stewart, for your service to our country. As a B-1 bomber pilot, in fact, holds the world record for the fastest nonstop flight around the world. And thank you for your service to our country, Chris. As our closest ally, Israel's security is critical, not only for the future of the Israeli people, but also for the security of the United States. Both of our nations were founded by those seeking political as well as religious freedom. Israel is the beacon of democracy in the Middle East. Our continued support for Israel is crucial to bringing peace, stability, and security to this most important region of the world. Daily rocket fire from Gaza is one of the many threats facing the Israeli people. I was in Israel last year, and as I stood at the border with Syria, 
I could hear mortar and rocket fire in the distance. Since its founding in 1948, Israel has faced a number of existential threats from all sides, including invasion by its neighbors and terrorism from radical groups operating within Israel, Gaza, and the West Bank. This past March, representative from Montana's Crow tribe presented a formal resolution to Israeli Ambassador Ron Dermer in my office here in Washington. The resolution from the Crow legislature to the Israeli people affirmed their support of Israel's right to exist and recognized their shared challenges of maintaining political and territorial independence and a deep connection to their ancestral homelands. But during this meeting in my office with Crow tribal leaders and Israeli Ambassador Dermer, Israeli Ambassador Dermer's cell phone went off. But it wasn't a call. It wasn't a text message. It wasn't an email. It was an app he had on his phone that many Israelis have to warn them of impending rocket attacks. It was a sober realization that each time his phone made that noise, fearful Israeli families had seconds to scramble for their lives. As the Israeli people remain steadfast in confronting these threats, they deserve our unyielding support now and in the future. America's commitment to Israel must never waver. We must stand with Israel. I yield back my time. Thank you, Mr. Daines, and I agree we must stand with Israel. All of us here tonight agree that we must stand with Israel. I'd now like to recognize uh, my colleague and good friend, Ms. Hartzler from Missouri, for five minutes. Thank you. Thank you, uh, gentlemen from Utah. Really appreciate you leading this uh, critical special order tonight. You know, it's been a dangerous few weeks in Israel. We've been watching the developments between Israel and Hamas and Gaza as Israel shows restraint while still protecting its citizens. Quite simply, Israel is under siege by a radical faction that displays blatant disregard for its citizens. Hamas is using its citizens as human shields, building bombs in the basement of schools and homes, and prohibiting families from evacuating areas where rockets are being launched. Israel has shown tremendous restraint and has every right to defend itself against these unwarranted attacks. Over 2,000 rockets have been launched into Israel, reaching even Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. Over 80% of the country's citizens have had to huddle in bomb shelters for parts of three weeks now. Over 6 million men, women, and children are endangered, yet Israel has agreed to ceasefire after ceasefire. Unfortunately, Hamas has not abided by these calls, firing dozens of rockets into Israel, even when Israel was ceasing its efforts to protect its citizens so that humanitarian assistance could arrive to the people in the Gaza Strip. Israel has gone above and beyond for years now to help the people of Gaza and give them an opportunity for a better life. Nine years ago, Israel moved to uh, totally out of Gaza, giving the land and the farms and greenhouses to the people of Gaza. 10,000 Israeli lives were disrupted as they moved to Israel. Generous people all over the world raised money to buy the tractors and farm equipment for the people of Gaza. The area could have become the jewel of the Mediterranean and a peaceful neighbor to Israel, a model of a two-state solution. Instead, they tore down the greenhouses. And instead of building roads and homes, they built tunnels with the intent to attack and kill Israelis. They voted in Hamas in power and turned the area into a terrorist military outpost. So here we are today. While Hamas has been on killing innocent Israelis, Israel is intent on preserving their lives. As they seek to stop the rocket fire in the Gaza Strip, Israel goes to great lengths to save innocent lives. It drops leaflets into the neighborhoods warning of an impending military attack to take out the rocket launchers, which are often strategically placed by Hamas in the neighborhoods. It then calls the residents of the house to warn them, then sends text messages to the home, then knocks on the house by dropping a small non-penetrating bomb on the roof to let people know they're serious. 
Unfortunately, Hamas has responded by stopping people from fleeing and even forcing them onto the rooftops as human shields. Thankfully, the Iron Dome missile defense system has stopped Hamas's deadly rockets from reaching their targets in Israel. As Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said, Israel uses its missile defense system to save human lives. Hamas uses its people to save its missiles. We need to be standing strong for the only democracy and our greatest ally in the Middle East. We need to let other nations know we will never abandon Israel, and they need to join us in speaking out against this affront to national sovereignty and to human decency. We need to be offering assistance to stop these attacks and help Israel stay safe. It's time for Hamas to agree to a total ceasefire. Any loss of life is tragic, and Hamas needs to end their blatant disregard of life for their citizens and agree to end the attacks. Please join me in praying for the peace of Jerusalem. I yield back. Thank you. Uh, we, are, uh, we have so many people who want to join in this conversation tonight, uh, and we, we are grateful for the, many of those who participated. It's my honor now to uh, introduce Mr. Engel, who is the ranking member of the Foreign Affairs Committee. Uh, sir, we're glad to have you with us. He represents New York, and I uh, now yield three minutes. I thank the gentleman for yielding to me. I want to thank uh, all my colleagues for their excellent remarks. I agree with every word that has been said. And, and I think perhaps I'll start off with a bit of good news, because everyone can see this tonight. You know, at a time when the pundits say that the two parties can't agree on anything, that nothing gets done, that there's too much fighting, well, there's one thing on which we agree. And that is that the support for Israel in this Congress is strong, and it's bipartisan, and that's the way it should be. And it's bipartisan for a number of reasons. First of all, Israel is the only democracy in the Middle East. We share common values with Israel, and we understand that the people of Israel right now are besieged. Uh, Hamas is a terrorist group. It's not a fight between Israel and Palestinians. It's a fight between Israel and a terrorist group. And as someone who was in New York on that fateful day of September 11, 2001, uh, Israel has endured many September 11s, uh, 2001s. Um, my colleague said it right before. The difference between the Hamas terrorists and Israelis is that Israel uses its missiles to protect its citizens, and Hamas uses its citizens to protect its missiles. Now, it's terrible when any civilians die. And my heart breaks for casualties on both sides. But you know what? Hamas, they use their citizens as human shields. They build their bomb factories and they build their missile factories in mosques, in schoolyards, even in the United Nations schools, there were missiles that were found. They do this deliberately because they don't apparently value human life at all. And let's just imagine, with us in the United States, if we had a terrorist group over the border in Canada who was firing rockets, hurting people in New York or Michigan, wouldn't we respond? If there were terrorists in Mexico that were firing into Arizona or, or Texas or California, would we just simply let our people be targets? Wouldn't we respond? Wouldn't we go over the border and try to root out the terrorists, root out their missiles, root out their tunnels if there were? Well, that's precisely what Israel's trying to do. Now, I'm introducing uh, the Emergency Iron Dome Replacement Act. The Iron Dome, which has been Israeli created and American funded, has saved countless numbers of Israeli lives. And by the way, Hamas has a nerve to talk about civilian casualties when it has targeted day after day, month after month, week after week, year after year, they target Israeli civilians. That's what they do. Israel targets the missiles, and there are some civilian casualties because of the way the Palestinians put their missiles right in the, in the densely populated areas. But Hamas has deliberately been trying to kill innocent Israeli uh, civilians. So the Iron Dome Replacement Act, which the United States has funded, uh, we hope will continue, and I know there will be strong bipartisan support on both sides. Now, any ceasefire should contain the total disarming of Hamas. Any ceasefire should contain the destruction of the tunnels, which, as my colleague very adeptly pointed out, the, those tunnels are made for terrible purposes. Now, the concrete that was coming into Gaza, they could have built schools and, and mosques and, and skyscrapers. But what did they do? They built terror tunnels so that they can try to kill uh, Israelis. 
and the media? Shame on some of the coverage we've seen in the media. There is no moral equivalency between a terrorist group and a nation that values its citizens and wants to protect its citizens. No moral equivalency whatsoever. Israel is trying to protect its citizens. Hamas only wants to kill. Read their charter. Read what they say about Jews. Read what they say about Israel. They want to destroy every last person in Israel. So I think the media ought to really just be a little more even-handed and not the way it's been portrayed uh, right uh, until now. So let me conclude by saying this. The bond between Israel and the United States is unbreakable, unshakable, has always been and will always be. The United States will always stand by the people of Israel, particularly in their fight to exist and in their fight against terrorism. Uh, I thank my, my friend, and I, and I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Engel, and thank you for your service on the foreign affairs. And you bring up such a great point. This is a bar bipartisan uh, issue. There is agreement on both sides of the aisle. We've got service members, we've got military members, we've got school teachers, we've got businessmen, we've got people from all backgrounds who want to speak on this tonight. Frankly, we've got more people who want to join in this special order than we have time for. I would like to now turn three minutes over to Mr. Collins from Georgia. He has a unique perspective as a member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee as well. He also served as a chaplain in the Air Force since 2002 and a combat tour in Iraq in 2008. And Mr. Collins, thank you for your service, and uh, I yield you three minutes. Now. Well, thank you as well for yours, and thanks for doing this tonight. Um, this is, a, is, is an easy one uh, for me. I stand with the State of Israel as well as her right to defend itself, and it's amazing to me at times that that is even called into question because Israel has proven time and time again is very capable of defending itself. And it is amazing to me that uh, the world uh, doesn't want to acknowledge that. This commitment that I have to Israel uh, is here now and will continue to be unwavering, even in the midst of this conflict uh, between Israel and Hamas is taking place in, in, mainly in Gaza. And I'm in firm uh, support of Israel's decision to launch ground operations and hope this conflict will be resolved quickly. Negotiations for a permanent ceasefire will occur soon in, in my hopes. Uh, for this uh, area. Currently, Israel's strategic objective is to eradicate Hamas's ability to terrorize Israel. Prime Minister Netanyahu gave the go-ahead to send ground troops into Gaza after a 10-day air operation failed to diminish Hamas's rocket barrage. Can you think of it if the U.S. was being targeted? Do you think we would wait a day to execute a ground incursion, let alone 10 days? Absolutely not! In fact, Israel and Egypt tried to negotiate a ceasefire with Hamas, but Hamas was unwilling to accept it. We see the true stripes of Hamas when they will not come to the table and they instead want to basically put their own citizens up uh, as human shields. You know, I've received a lot of folks feedback from folks in the 9th District who feel very strongly about the United States' support for Israel. And from the beginning, when the three young Israeli teens were kidnapped, Georgians empathize with the pain of a nation as the hope that the three teenagers would be returned to Israel unharmed. Unfortunately, their bodies were discovered in a Palestinian-controlled area that had been brutally murdered at the hands of Hamas. I think my constituents would agree when I say peaceful solutions to this, to end this conflict between Israel and the residents of the Gaza Strip is preferred. Hamas, on one more, on more than one occasion, however, has rejected ceasefires Israel was more than willing to agree to. We as Americans understand fighting terrorism is a constant fight, and there, this is yet another reason why we must continue to work toward combating terrorism, not just on American soil, but supporting our allies in their fight against terrorism. Our support is shown in many ways, but the biggest was in the Iron Dome defense system, and hundreds of Hamas rockets have been intercepted by Iron Dome and have protected those in Israel who are being terrorized by Hamas. Hamas is hiding Palestinians in their own uh, people, to protect their rockets while Israel is protecting their people with the Iron Dome. These are the things that must be reported. These are the things that must be uh, looked after, and a peaceful solution needs to be found soon. The administration needs to get its priorities correct, and Israelis understand this, and that is why they need to continue to protect themselves, and the resources to go into Gaza should be used to build schools and hospitals and infrastructure instead of the things that the Palestinians are not getting. And this is why the United States must continue to support Israel, and we must continue to support their fight against terrorism, and we must continue to maximize our efforts toward the peace that will last in Israel 
in this area. I do appreciate it, and I do uh, yield back to the gentleman. Thank you, Mick, for your comments and for your support, Mr. Collins. I'm now happy to introduce the newest member of Congress, Mr. Claussen from Florida. Thank you very much for this time. We are living in a time of significant crisis at home and worldwide. We've got a humanitarian and national security crisis on our own border. And all Americans are deeply concerned and looking for solutions. Simultaneously, we see a border crisis in the Middle East that makes our own border crisis pale by comparison. We see our friend and ally, Israel, attacked physically, but also, sadly enough, attacked in the media. It's our solemn duty, I believe, to address this crisis as well as our own crisis on our own border. Israel's borders have been attacked by, 2000, by over 2,000 rockets launched by Hamas with total disregard for innocent lives. Within Gaza, Hamas sets up their rocket launchers in the midst of apartment buildings, mosques, UN-sponsored schools, using civilians as human shields. Hamas is not seeking to minimize collateral damage, but rather to maximize it. Meanwhile, elements of the media fuel anti-Israeli propaganda with scenes of innocent dead and wounded Palestinians, adding to Israel's dilemma, falsely asserting that the Israeli defense forces are committing war crimes. But the fact is, Israel is responding with careful precision taking extraordinary steps that few nations would take to protect lives on both sides of this fight. Israel's Iron Dome is shooting down rockets that would otherwise kill Israelis. Israel's warning civilians in Gaza in advance of attacking terrorist infrastructure there. Israel takes extraordinary steps to minimize collateral damage. Israel wants peace. Hamas seeks the destruction of Israel. This cannot happen. The United States must stand firmly with Israel and against Hamas and take a leadership role in convincing the world to do likewise. And we must remember the threats, the threats extend beyond Gaza and Hamas. Hezbollah, the Islamist militant group, an Iranian surrogate based in Lebanon, possesses thousands of rockets on another part of Israel's border. ISIS evolved from al-Qaeda in Iraq, has declared an Islamic caliphate in major areas of Syria and Iraq, threatening the entire region, but especially Israel. Iran, the world's exporter of terrorism, committed to the destruction of Israel, continues to hold nuclear ambition, raising security issues not only for Israel but for the entire world. We cannot waver in leading the international community towards a long-term verifiable solution. The Middle East is arguably a more dangerous place than at any time in history, with Israel threatened on several fronts by well-armed and well-funded terrorists, distressingly close to possessing weapons of mass destruction. This cannot happen. This is not a time for partisan bickering between Democrats and Republicans nor between the Congress and the administration. It is a time for national discourse to educate the public about the dangers out there with the goal of national unity and resolve to stand behind Israel, the only democratic state in the world's most dangerous neighborhood. Speaking as a freshman Congress, congressman, the most new, the newest congressman, I pledge to work with my colleagues to seek better ways of working together in support of the State of Israel and its right to exist. In these times of peril, I believe it's our duty to work as a team, stand with Israel. Together, we can seek a path to lasting solutions in the Middle East. The alternative cannot happen. America must come together to support Israel. I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Claussen, and we look forward to serving with you in the future and once again welcome you. It's now my honor to introduce uh, my good friend and someone I've come to respect and admire, Ms. Walarski from Indiana. 
She's the daughter of an Air Force veteran and is, uh, serves on the House Armed Services and Veterans Affairs Committees. I thank the gentleman from Utah for yielding. Mr. Speaker, as with past conflicts in the Middle East, much of the media focus in this current conflict between Israel and Hamas has been on the death tolls on each side. But what this reporting neglects to mention is Hamas's destruction of its own people. Legitimate governments understand that one of the most important duties of any nation is the protection of its people and the protection of innocent civilians. Israel goes to great lengths to avoid targeting civilians from its use of precision-guided weapons to sending out phone and text warnings to evacuating buildings before it carries out a strike. Yet Hamas's leaders are willing to sacrifice their own people in an attempt to score political points. Hamas continues to force civilians, including women and children, to stand in harm's way and literally act as human shields for the terrorist leaders in, proper, in properties causing Israeli strikes on legitimate military targets to result in the loss of innocent lives. As General Conway, the 34th Commandant of the United States Marine Corps, recently wrote in the Wall Street Journal, there is a clear and obvious, quote unquote, moral chasm, he says, between Hamas and Israel. Hamas has always targeted civilians, and they continue to target civilians. It is their standard operating procedure, and it is one of the reasons that makes them a terrorist organization. Sadly, though, what we are seeing in this conflict is nothing new. This is the third time in less than six years that fighting has broken out between Israel and Hamas. In order to secure peace and stability in the Middle East, America, our allies, and anyone else truly concerned about the safety of civilians on both sides of the border should focus on keeping weapons out of the hands of Hamas's leaders. We must condemn anyone, perhaps most importantly, Iran, who is supporting and arming Hamas. Iran supplies Hamas with rockets and training. Just yesterday's, just yesterday, Iran's supreme leader declared on Iranian national TV this quote. He said, everyone, whoever has the means, especially in the Islamic world, they should do what they can do to arm the Palestinian nation. The Zionist regime deeply regrets starting this war, but it has no way out. We must stand strongly with Israel as it exercises its legitimate right to self-defense. We must call on the international community to join us in condemning Hamas for their human rights violations. Everyone wants the current conflict in Gaza to end, but how it ends is critically important. The conflict can only be truly over when there are no rockets, there are no tunnels, and when Hamas has been completely disarmed and defeated militarily and politically. And with that, my gentleman from Utah, I yield back the balance of my time. And we thank you, uh, Ms. Olarski, and beautifully said. Uh, I'd now like to introduce uh, someone I have come to have tremendous respect for. He brings not only unique perspective, but great experience to this question as chairman of the House Appropriations Defense Subcommittee, also a U.S. Army Vietnam veteran, although you appear to be far too young for that. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I yield, I yield you uh, your time. Uh, uh, thanks, gentlemen, uh, for uh, yielding. Mr. Speaker, I stand with Israel. There are certain principles that govern the conduct of nations that are so basic, so fundamental, that the world should never have to be reminded of them. The most fundamental of these is simple and straightforward. A nation has the right and obligation to defend its people and its territory from attack. Unfortunately, however, this fundamental principle does not bear repeating tonight because too, too many around the world seem to have forgotten it, or too many seem to think it only applies to every nation but one, the state of Israel. But make, make no mistake, it applies to Israel just as it applies to every nation on the face of the earth. Every nation, every one, has the right and obligation to defend its people and its territory. The thousands of rockets launched against Israel by the terrorist group Hamas are a deliberate attack on the state of Israel and the Israeli people. I stand with Israel's right to exist in peace and protect itself. I stand with Israel in terms of its efforts to defend itself and support the very important Iron Dome, Arrow Program, and David Sling program, which keeps the Israeli people safe. I stand with Israel in its effort to destroy the ability of Hamas to attack Israelis, Israeli, Israeli people and its territory. Mr. Speaker, I stand with Israel. I thank the gentleman, and I yield back. Thank you, Chairman Freeman Heisen, for your comments and for your leadership.
It's now my honor to introduce Mr. Lance from New Jersey. He served for many years in the New Jersey State Legislature and now serves on the powerful House Energy and Commerce Committee. And, sir, I yield you three minutes. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. For those of us in the United States who value Israel, its people, and its value, symbolic and real, these are heartbreaking times. Our world's most sacred lands are again brutalized by terror as evil tries to extinguish the Jewish state. Though we may be far in distance, our spirit, support, and resources are needed. The United States stands in solidarity with Israel and its fundamental right to defend itself. The ongoing crisis in Israel may feel a world away to some, but the significance cannot be understated. A free people and democratic ally of our nation faces continued war by elements of hate and intolerance, similar to those that have claimed the lives of millions, forever scared the face of the earth and brought this battle to our shores 13 years ago. To no terror, look at their tactics. While Israel uses weapons to shield women and children, Hamas uses women and children to shield weapons. When Israel offers a ceasefire, Hamas orders more rocket launches. When Israel offers compromise, Hamas calls for more bloodshed. Israel needs and deserves the support of the world community, not a lecture from media commentators. If the United States were under daily rocket assault, assuredly, the press would not question our right to keep Americans safe. Many of us in Congress have worked together in a bipartisan fashion to support Israel. Look no further than the Iron Dome capability at the center of Israel's current defense apparatus. The Iron Dome has been the guardian of a people under siege, and it was constructed with the help American ingenuity, American technology, and American funds. Countless other measures have sought to assist Israel, including legislation recently passed here in the House to disrupt, to the greatest extent possible, international financing capabilities of terror networks. How can Israel negotiate with entities on a mission for its destruction? The answer is moral authority. Israel stands for peace, democracy, the rule of law, human rights, liberty, an eventual two-state solution, and peace through strength. In this time of great moral crisis, now is not the time for neutrality. Nearly 800 people proudly stood in solidarity with Israel earlier this month at the New Jersey headquarters of the Jewish Federation of Greater Metro West as we rallied for Israel. Tonight, that same energy is here in Washington, where I join many other lawmakers in further conversation as how best the United States can assist our friend in need. Israel must never lose its resolve, its mission, its purpose, or forget its proud history. And the United States must support our great ally as it fights to preserve its very existence. I yield back. Thank you, sir, Mr. Lance. You know, as a manager of the special order, I have to be prepared to uh, fill the time if we need to, to uh, fill any gaps in the conversation, and cl very clearly that's not been necessary tonight. We have so many eloquent members and, who are anxious and, uh, and have stating this case so powerfully. I'd like to now to recognize Mr. Franks from Arizona, also serves on the uh, Services Committee and Judiciary Committee, I'm sorry, Armed Services and Judiciary Committees, and is also Chairman of the Constitution Subcommittee. Mr. Franks. I thank the gentleman. Uh, Mr. Speaker, Congresswoman Michelle Bachman and I recently introduced HRES 622 to defund the Palestinian Authority. We have now 27 bipartisan co-sponsors in the House of Representatives, and just today we received nearly 28,000 signatures supporting this policy. Mr. Speaker, may we all remember that Yasser Arafat, the founder of the Palestinian Authority, proclaimed early on, quote, we plan to eliminate 
the state of Israel and establish a purely Palestinian state. We will make life unbearable for the Jews by psychological warfare and population explosion. We Palestinians will take care over everything, including all of Jerusalem." Close quote. Mr. Speaker, Mahmoud Abbas, the current head of the Palestinian Authority, has taken this mantra to its insidious end by publicly uniting with the terrorist group Hamas, which is really the Muslim Brotherhood. Let me make this very clear, Mr. Speaker. The Hamas and Palestinian Authority have now become one and the same. Yet even as Hamas has continued to launch cowardly attacks from neighborhoods in Gaza, in hiding behind innocent women and children and making civilian casualties a deliberate strategy, this president has responded by heralding President Mahmoud Abbas as a man of peace. Mr. Speaker, in spite of the president's astonishing failure to do so, Congress must continue to its, its steadfast commitment of supporting Israel to protect against Hamas' thirst for death. And the first, in do, first step in doing that is to defund the Palestinian Authority. And I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Franks. I'm happy now to introduce a good friend of mine, someone once again that I've come to respect greatly. Uh, for one thing, he's a colonel in the Army National Guard. I was only a major when I separated from the Air Force, so of course I salute him every time I see him. He sits on the Homeland Security and also Foreign Affairs Committees, Mr. Perry from Pennsylvania. Well, th thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'd like to start by thanking the, the great gentleman from Utah who is indeed a friend and thank him for his service. And we've heard much tonight about uh, Israel and the rockets and, uh, and, uh, and everything that's happening in that part of the world. But one thing we haven't talked about much is the U United Nations Human Rights Council, which really can't be taken seriously as a human rights organization. And I'll tell you why. Let's, let's talk about some of the members on that. Cuba, Russia, Congo, Ivory Coast, Venezuela, and China. You know, when you think about Cuba and Venezuela, they outlaw political demonstrations in their country. But yet they're on the Human Rights Council, judging Israel. When you think about Ivory Coast or Congo, who allow genital mutilation in their country, yet they're judging Israel. Now, this commission established a probe to probe alleged war crimes, a commission to probe alleged war crimes in violation of international law by Israel for defending its citizens against rocket and terror tunnels, rocket attacks and terror tunnels. I mean, really? A commission to probe the war crimes from Israel. Now, what they should be doing instead is focusing on Hamas, which uses its citizens as human shields while its commanders flee to bunkers. If Hamas uses human shields to protect its, its, uh, its rockets, I mean, is that Israel's fault for defending itself? But somehow, as Americans, we're told that that's what we should believe. Everybody, everybody in this chamber, every American is saddest, saddened by the tragic loss of innocent life on both sides of the conflict. However, let's be clear, it's Hamas a designated terrorist organization that's refused to de-escalate this conflict. Recently I heard a reporter and some other folks saying, well, in Gaza, where should the Palestinians go? There's no, it's small, there's nowhere to go to avoid the rockets from Israel. You know, where should they go? They should stay right there and quit firing on Israel. Quit digging tunnels into Israel. That's what they should do and then this problem would relieve itself. I mean, who dug these tunnels? Who's fired over 2,000 rockets into Israel? They don't have to go anywhere. They just need to quit attacking Israel. No U.S. funds should go towards the Palestinian Authority or its institutions, so long as Hamas is part of a unity Palestinian government. Secretary Kerry's recent actions have actually hampered a ceasefire. This administration continues to befriend our enemies and make enemies of our friends, and it must stop, Mr. Speaker. It's critical for the U.S. to reiterate our support for our ally, our only ally there, which is Israel, including its right of its people to live in peace and to defend itself. And with that, Mr. Speaker, I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Perry. And I'd like, uh, once again, I have the honor of introducing a member with a unique background, Mr. Benevolio from Michigan. He was stationed in Iraq with the Michigan Army National Guard. He himself experienced that uh, rocket attacks while at LSA Aden, and this happened on a regular basis. So I think he speaks with some authority of the subject tonight. 
I'd like to thank the gentleman from Utah, Mr. Stewart. He is a true friend of Israel and a friend of mine as well. Mr. Speaker, I rise in strong support of Israel and its right to self-defense as it faces the ongoing threat of terrorist rockets from Gaza. Picture the scene. You're walking down the streets of Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv. You look around you. You see men, women, and children of all ages. To your right is an elderly man with a walker. A few paces ahead is a mother with her stroller. It's peaceful. It's calm. It's the embodiment, embodiment of urban normality. And suddenly you hear it. Everyone instinctively knows what it is. And in a split second, everything changes. It's the red alert siren. A rocket is racing towards the city at breakneck speed. Only seconds remain to find refuge in a bomb shelter. And the rocket could land anywhere, on a preschool, on a hospital, on a random family home, or perhaps on the mother and her stroller up ahead. Mr. Speaker, this is the threat that Israel faces, Hamas and other terrorist groups in Gaza, which deliberately target Israeli citizens and civilians while indiscriminately, which indiscriminately kill, maim and terrorize, and whose sole purpose is to destroy the state of Israel. When faced with a, such a complete absence of basic moral inhibition by a brutal enemy, it is Israel, Israel's right, nay, its duty, to forcefully respond in order to eliminate the threat. It's not disproportionate. It's self-defense, pure and simple. And it's precisely why the state of Israel deserves our unwavering support at this time. It's also, why so, it's also why no government that claims to be interested in peace can credibly partner with a group like Hamas. It's past time for Palestinian Authority President to dissolve this, his unity governing arrangement with this appalling terrorist group. We can't have it both ways. We can choose to make peace with Hamas or with Israel. As for me, I've made my choice. I'm proud to support the Jewish state, and I stand with Israel because Israel embodies all the values I embrace, peace, democracy, tolerance, while the values of Hamas, hate, extremism, violence, violate everything I believe in. Thank you, and I yield the floor. And thank you. The gentleman from Michigan has stated it once again, like many others, very powerfully. And now, for, in conclusion tonight, Mr. Smith from New Jersey, who once again is a senior member of the Committee on Foreign Affairs, has great experience and is unquestionably, like many of us, a strong supporter of Israel. Mr. Smith. Thank you very much. Uh, I thank my good friend from Utah. I thank him for his service to our country uh, and for, again, bringing us all together this evening. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to call on the President of the United States to give Israel the robust and vigorous support it deserves. Since the latest round of unprovoked rocket barrages were launched on July 6th by Hamas, Israeli citizens have lived under a relentless rocket attack, mortar fire, even attack from Hamas drone aircraft and a foiled sea raid. Israel itself has lived under a media attack, a calculated campaign to isolate Israel for defending itself. Major articles in international newspapers around the world grossly take a grossly anti-Israeli slant. Make no mistake about it, Mr. Speaker, a major purpose of Hamas's rocket attacks is to provoke counterattacks, thereby to use the inevitable civilian deaths to set up an international media campaign against Israel. Hamas is guilty of sacrificing Palestinian lives and is guilty of using women and children as human shields in a brutally cynical attempt to manipulate world public opinion and isolate Israel. Mr. Speaker, the facts on the ground of Hamas attacks were clear from the start and follow long-established patterns. It's time our government sent a much more powerful and unambiguous message that the U.S. fully supports Israel's right to defend itself. The administration should emphasize that Israel's actions in its own defense are legal, that they are right, and that the U.S. stands with Israel without any ifs, ands, or buts, or so longs, or any other qualifiers. As of yesterday, since the start of Israel's Operation Protective Edge, 2,500 rockets have been fired at Israel from Gaza. 1,800 
and 75 of these have landed in Israel. 495 have been shot down by Iron Dome. Also, as of yesterday, the IDF has uncovered in Gaza 32 tunnels with more than 60 access shafts, some of which were in mosques and houses. Anyone who has read today's feature in the New York Times, tunnels lead right to the heart of Israeli fear. Understand what these tunnels mean. The tunnels are about 50 feet underground, mostly undetectable, like this one to my left, and, and underground uh, equipment cannot even discover their whereabouts. The story quotes Eliel Brandeis, who lives in Kibbutz Sufa, and he quotes and says, it's a very pastoral environment. I live in the quiet of the green grass, the trees. It's not pleasant, though, that you sit one day on a patio drinking coffee with your wife and a bunch of terrorists will rise from the ground. That's exactly what happened a mile from his kibbutz at dawn on July 17th. Many Israelis more concerned about the tunnels than the rockets. Perhaps this gives us some insight into the dimension of, of the Hamas terror. I note, Mr. Speaker, that despite these rocket uh, attacks uh, by Hamas and tunnels, Israel continues to permit the transfer into Gaza of humanitarian supplies and goods. Israel's humanity, while under terrorist file, file, its continued effort to do everything it can to separate terrorist militants from Palestinian civilians only underscores the evil nature of Hamas. Mr. Speaker, Hamas was designated a foreign terrorist organization in 1997. It, is, it has adopted a charter, the famous Covenant of the Islamic Resistance. That charter remains its ideological program. Only yesterday, Khalid Michel, the leader of Hamas, spoke on the Charlie Rose show in response to a question, do you want to coexist with the state of Israel? He said no. He said no. Hamas doesn't want peace, nor reconciliation or coexistence. It wants to utterly destroy the state of Israel. And I have further comments I will be saying later on this evening about the charter. Please read the charter. It couldn't be clearer that it wants to destroy, that is to say, Hamas wants to destroy Israel. I thank my good friend, Vildi. Thank you, Mr. Smith, and uh, powerfully said. And in conclusion, as we wind down our time tonight, let me just finalize with these thoughts. There's a great line from a speech that would have been given by John F. Kennedy on November 1963 if he'd been allowed to give that speech before he was assassinated. And he said, this people... This generation, not by choice, but by destiny, are set to be the watchmen on the wall of world freedom. We may not like the fact that we have to lead in the world. We may not like the responsibility. We may not like the cost. We may not like the hassle or the criticism or sometimes the hatred that is directed toward us. But it doesn't matter. We have to lead. If we don't do it, who else will? If we don't lead, we give power to our enemies and we weaken our friends. We have a chance here tonight to make a statement to the world. To the people of Israel, we stand by your side. To the peace-loving people of Gaza, we stand with you as well. But to the terrorists who seek for the destruction of Israel, and to the leaders of Hamas who seek only for death and destruction, we, the American people, will always stand in your way. And with that, Mr. Speaker, I yield back my time.